Hey guys, it's Will from LearnRater, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the 2009 AP Microeconomics FRQ question number two, which is related around tax, taxes and overall effects of taxes. So in the question, we are given that there is a market for calculators, and what we're asked about is to first calculate the producer surplus before the tax. So before the tax, we know that the producer surplus is going to be this triangle, and what we need to do is we need to compute the area of this triangle. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that the area of a right triangle is 1 half base times height. And we also know that in this case, our base is going to be 90 times our height, which is 5 minus 2, or 3. So that's 270 divided by 2, which is 135. And that is our answer for part A. Now let's look at part B. Now we are faced with a per unit tax of $2, and what we need to think about is the impact of this tax on revenue as well as the producer surplus. So first let's think about what this tax actually does. So a per unit tax effectively will make it so that you have um, a situation where every single calculator you sell, you're giving away $2 to account for the tax. And therefore, our total tax revenue is going to be this box right here. And the reason why is because you look at where the supply equals the demand, which in this case with the, with the new supply curve is at 6, and then you look backwards to the original supply curve and see where it intersects there. And this is essentially the price that sellers will keep and this is the price that sellers will charge as a result of having to pay this $2 tax. And therefore, we've actually answered part A and part B of part two because we can calculate the tax revenue by calculating the area of this box, which is six minus four, or two, times 60. And then we've also gone ahead and figured out the after-tax price of sellers, which is $4. So now what we're asked to do is to go ahead and calculate the new producer surplus after the tax. So let's go ahead and think about that real quick. We can think about this by looking at the new producer surplus. So in this case, our new producer surplus is going to be this region. And therefore, we have a producer surplus of a half times a base of 60, times 4 minus 2, which is 2, which is the same as 60. So that is our new producer surplus. Now let's look at part C, which is asking us about if the demand is price elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic between the prices of 5 and 6. So the best way to solve this question is to think about the change in total revenue we know that total revenue is price times quantity. And therefore, we want to look at first, if price equals 5, what happens? So if price equals 5, we know that we are faced with 5 times 90, price times quantity. So 5 times 90, which is equal to 450. And then what we also know is that at price equals 6, which is the after the tax effect, we set a quantity of 60, which is equal to 360. So let's think about this for a little bit. What does this mean? Well, in this case, we have raised prices. However, we have seen a decrease in total revenue. And what that finding tells us is that we are, we are demand price elastic. Right? Because if we are raising our price and our consumer is changing easily or shifting away from calculators with ease, then what's happening is essentially we have an elastic market in which we are faced with a situation where our overall total revenue as a result of the tax of the price increase is going down. So if your price goes up and your total revenue is going down, that means that you're elastic. Whereas if it were a situation which consumers could not easily switch away, in which, you know, if we were to raise the price and total revenue were to go up, then we would be faced with an inelastic situation. 
So now let's think about part D, which is assuming no externalities, how does the tax affect allocative efficiency? Well, in this case, what we know is that as we as we think about the effect of this tax, we are actually decreasing allocative efficiency. And the reason why we know this is because there's a deadweight loss that is created as a result of the tax. And so let's go ahead and highlight what that deadweight loss is. So if we think about it, this is the deadweight loss as a result of the tax. So because we're setting this tax, this per unit tax in which our supplier is taxed for $2 every unit that he sells, what we're faced with is a situation in which we're not at the best allocatively efficient situation that we originally found, which was at a price of 5 and a quantity of 90, because we have this new deadweight loss that is created. So this is deadweight loss. So in summary, Part D we will have a decrease in our allocative efficiency because our total surplus has gone down and subsequently we now have a deadweight loss. So to review everything and what's important from this question, first you need to make sure that you understand how to calculate your producer surplus. Then you need to think about how it taxes influence the producer surplus as well as the price that sellers keep. And then finally you need to think about the definition of elasticity and how to calculate changes in elasticity with respect to certain price points. But that's it for this question. As always, if you have any additional questions or need extra help, feel free to check out LearnRater for hundreds of AP micro questions. We also have macro as well. But for now, I will see you guys next time.